Well, good morning. It's the next day. <laughs> On this very, very bright autumnal day, I'm having to block the sunlight out. As you can see, look, like here, it's a really bright sunny day, so I'm having to sit in, in a certain position. Okay, so I've added my words to my song, and I've added a few pictures as I've gone along as well. I might add some more to it a little bit later on when I've found a few more bits and pieces. But I just want to quickly show you what the pages are sort of looking like. So, I'll read the words to the song. I won't sing it, I promise. I see trees of green, red roses too. Now, as I said, I did ask for a little bit of leeway because I didn't have a red rose. I see them bloom and I pick this little girl because she's got a, a basket of flowers. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colours of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're only saying, I love you. And I put this little girl with her doggy, because I thought the doggy would love the little girl. Um, now, what I did start to do was... Because of this being so textured with it being embossed, it meant that I couldn't do any sort of shadowing lines on there. So I started doing a little bit of shading with the crayons. I'm just going to show you how I did that. It's just that if you have a look at this page, it looks bland with it like that. And so what I ended up doing, and I might add, you know, uh, stickles and things to this to just liven it up a little so I actually got my distress crayon forest moss and I put it on a block on a stamping block and then got one of those water brushes so I just put some water on the edge there and then picked up a bit of this colour dabbed a bit of the excess off and then I just basically drew right next to the line of words and I did it haphazardly I wasn't going for a perfectly straight line as you can probably tell from the others because I think sometimes if you try and achieve the, the perfection of a straight line, you always end up getting higgledy-piggledy. So at least this way I've done it on purpose, instead of muxing it up. And that's all I did. Was I just went round, drawing along some of those lines. And as I say, I might add some sequins on here. Um, I might add some stickles, but it just needs that little bit of something. And so I'm going to carry on playing, ink up around all the edges of the words. And uh, then I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm actually going to put all of this together. Do -ba -do. See, that needs a little bit of something. That'll look better with the lines on it. Cute couple. I love her. Now, on that one, I did think about adding some leaves, but do you know what? Some die cut leaves. I think, you know, if I if I do any more to it, I think I'll overkill it. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. So I'm going to go off and go and have another little play. I'll be back in a bit. So what I ended up doing was I went through again on the pages and I used some more of the metallic gilding wax as you can see I've got it all over my fingers and I used some crystal stickles and I'll show you one of the pages so that you can get an idea. 
So if I move to the side so that the sun's shining on it, can you see I've got the gilding wax and the stickles on those butterflies um, and went and added a little bit of land for the girls to rest their feet on. Um, so yeah, I went through and, and went and added gilding wax in, in all sorts of little places just to, to highlight it a bit. The other thing that I went and did was this piece was like that and I cut it in half and I've stitched around the four sides and this is going to be the front and the back cover so I'm now going to just clip those together and they all want to meet at this edge here which will be the spine edge so if I just tap it just check on the height of that back piece And then I'm just going to clip them together to just hold them in place. Hang on, that one's a little bit too low. Lift that one up a touch. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pokey saw and I'm going to poke through about here, through all the pages. So that's why I need to make sure that it's all lined up. And I could use a hole punch. I've got a little single one. I'm just going to work my way through. There we go, and I've made it through to the other side. And then I've got a big eyed needle that I'm just going to pass through. She says, hopefully. And that will open up the hole a little bit more. Which is a good job, seeing as this needle is what's got to go through. I'm just going to wiggle it a bit. There we go. Okay. Now I've got this lovely metallic thread that I thought that I would use as the closure. And I've got these two lovely brass pieces. So I'm going to thread the thread through there and down there and I'm just going to tie it at the back in a double knot I don't want it too bulky there we go and glossy accents scissors I nearly clipped the wrong bit of thread then clip that little bit of extra off and then on the back I am going to stick no I'm not I'm going to thread my needle up first I want plenty of thread. I'm sticking my tongue out as I'm doing this. There we go. And then that will go through from the back through to the front. And then this, I'm just going to lift it off slightly and put some glossy accents on the back. So 
that will then hold that in place. Put that clip on there to hold it. Okay. Unclip that. And then April just wraps this thread round and round. And then I'm going to add that onto the length of thread. And I'm going to stitch through it a couple of times. And then I can tie that off on the back by threading it through those stitches on the back. And then knotting those ends together. And once I've got off camera, I will actually add little drop of glossy accents onto that thread to prevent it from coming undone so in the meantime And then that can just slide under there to hold that in place. Now, April was saying that this is reminiscent of an, a very antique book um, that was used for Bible scripture and hymns and stuff like that. And this was a technique that they used to bind their kind of books. But as I say, I will put the link in the, vid in the description box down below so that you can go and have a look. She explains it a lot better than I do. So basically, you undo that unravel it put that off to one side and then you open the pages like so so you could add like index cards or some coffee dyed paper in between each of these pages so that if you wanted to write on it then you could do these two seem to like being together come on part they're not stuck or anything I think it's because they're the same size and then I thought about putting the remainder of the words on the back of this one maybe adding a little pocket or something on the inside there and then you just line them back up so that they're all strung together nice and neatly and then you wrap your thread around again to tie it back up but i thought what a really nice idea because you oh, i've wrapped that the wrong way <laughs> you know how many many in particular are actually quite difficult to buy for and uh and I thought that this would make a lovely journal for you to make for a man uh, with his favourite song in. But I mean, like my mum, she's difficult to buy for now, you know. Um, and if I put some uh, photographs of the grandchildren and the words of a, a together with the words of a song that she really likes, I thought that that would make a really nice gift. 
Now you may think that this video is over, but it's not. Hang about for a bit of something else to show you to go along with this. I had a little thought. Because obviously this is such delicate paper and one of the things that I wanted to point out was that the two pages at the back of this book are the ones that I sprayed with PVA watered down glue um, and I can tell it in the texture how different it is. Only over time will I tell whether this is going to be more long lasting than those that I didn't spray with the watered down PVA glue. <laughs> But it's definitely a lot harder, flatter, uh, whereas the other is slightly softer and more textured. I mean, it's, it's minimal, you know, fractional. But because these papers are so delicate, I thought it needs a cover. And so, obviously, I order a lot of stuff from Amazon, as you do. And I've got this envelope here. And so I'm going to use some kitchen roll and this embossing folder and I'm going to decorate both the front and the back with these um, papers so that it matches with the journal on the inside. And the other thing that I was then going to do was, oh, that was it, was because, as you can see, it doesn't cover the whole envelope. So... What I thought of doing was I'm going to neaten this edge up, which is the flap, and then I'm going to cover the rest of this envelope, apart from this area here, on the front and on the back, with some shoe polish. So, that's my first step. Oh, <laughs> first step, actually, Carol, is to cut that down to just give me a nice straight edge and I can add some decorative paper onto that so that it flaps over a lot more on the back side now I'm only going to do this shoe polish around the edge okay so I'm going to go off and go and do this this is just ordinary brown shoe polish and it will just help to stain that cardboard. So I'm going to go off and make my embossed papers for this cover and ink this up with the shoe polish. And I'll come back in a bit and I'll show you um, what it all looks like. See you in a second. Hawky corky. I've inked up my Amazon envelope and as you can see I did it with the the shoe polish doesn't it look like faux leather love it love the effects of that and then the other thing that I did was I got the kitchen roll and I put several layers on in the embossing folder and embossed it and then once it was dry I then sprayed it with loads of different inks I did some I don't know whether you can see that I did some stitching around the edge and I also used walnut stain around the edge of that as well so that's going to sit on there so let's glue that in place and I'm just going to use some collal glue to put around the edge and across the center And then that can be the front panel. And then I can flip this over and stick the one on the back. Now I could have just done this with ordinary card instead of the kitchen roll. But it meant that I used the kitchen roll up rather than throwing it away. And also it's in keeping then with the journal that's then inside. And in fact, it got me to thinking that if you do mixed media and you have got 
loads of kitchen roll like I have for inking up or for picking up all the excess inks and stuff I'm going to emboss these now the same as I have done these and then I'll be able to utilize them and I'm not just going to end up throwing them away and it's the texture of it even though it's embossed and you can feel the texture of the embossing it's the feeling of it because it's the kitchen roll it's quite nice and soft and then I've got some lovely buttons here and I've cut the shanks off the back and I'm going to glue one in the center and one on the flap at the top now what I like to do with glossy accents is put it on and then leave it for a little while to just allow the glue to go a little bit tacky so I'll be back in a second I've got some more metallic thread and I'm just going to sit it on the top there in the center where this top button is going to sit and so I'll sit that one on top of there so that will help to anchor down that metallic thread and I'm just going to clip it in place And then this bottom button, I'm going to put a dimensional on there. And put some glue on. And that will give it that little bit of depth from the envelope. And then that can sit there and then once that's dry that I can then wrap my thread around those two buttons ta-da and here it is finished so what I ended up doing was I typed up the words of the song I've added some brads on the corners I added two of Tim Holt's little girls because they're both with the lovely flowers and some butterflies I'd made previously and then when we flip it over I don't know why I'm doing it sing-songy but there you go one of those days and then we undo that and in there is our journal wrong way up there we go wrong way up there we go so I hope that you have enjoyed the process of me making this and that it's given you some inspiration of your own to maybe see about making one either for yourself or for someone else as a present or just have a play. I mean, these would make great journaling cards as well. OK, thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you all again really soon. Bye for now.